This was a man, he was just passing through New Haven. I felt his heart racing, got short of breath, was dizzy. So he came in to Yale here, and uh, lo and behold, he was found to have atrial fibrillation. And he was uh, in his uh, late 70s, and in speaking to this man, and I, uh, in explaining to him, you know, the reason why you're feeling so poorly is this abnormal rhythm called atrial fibrillation. And he said to me, atrial fibrillation, he said, you know, when I was on the Yale crew, you know, this must have been that back now probably in 1950, he said, every one of my boat mates has had atrial fibrillation. Eight out of eight of us have had atrial fibrillation. There have been a number of studies that have shown that long-time, lifelong endurance exercisers do have an increased risk of atrial fibrillation. What happens in atrial fibrillation is that the uh, electrical system of the upper chamber goes haywire. And so instead of a nice synchronized squeeze, first the upper, then the lower, what happens is that the upper chamber just sits there and quivers like this, and the lower chamber, the ventricles are fast and irregular. When the atrium is not uh, squeezing, clots can form and uh, break off and cause a stroke. It's a graded effect. You do more exercise, you're gonna be healthier as far as atrial fibrillation as well as everything else. I think we know that the tail end of the curve the marathoners, the ultra marathoners, triathletes, that's real, you know, lifelong marathoners, lifelong triathletes is where we're going to see the incidence of atrial fibrillation go up. The relationship between um, exercise and um, cardiovascular events follow what we call a U-shaped curve where a very small v amount of exercise is associated with increased cardiovascular events. And then there's a sweet spot where moderate exercise is associated with a significant improvement in cardiovascular outcomes. But then you can end up, if you overdo it, you end up on the other part of the, um, of the U-curve, which is associated with other um, cardiovascular er events, specifically arrhythmias. Cross-country skiers uh, were some of the first groups that were looked at. And the incidence of atrial fibrillation in those cross-country skiers as they grew into middle age was then compared to age-matched controls. Other individuals in the population of similar age who had not been or were not uh, cross-country skiers. And what those studies found was that uh, in that case control type of study, that the incidence of atrial fibrillation was two to five to even seven times higher in the endurance exercisers than in an age-matched population. The exact mechanisms of atrial fibrillation in high endurance athletes are not very well understood. There are several potential mechanisms, however. When individuals exercise, there is a significant increase in cardiac output of the heart. And with that increase in cardiac output, the um, atria, which are very thin-walled, tend to dilate and uh, tend to enlarge. We know that there's a natural adaptation to endurance exercise. There are some studies that have shown that exercise changes uh, what's called the strain pattern, the way the atrium squeezes in ways that could promote atrial fibrillation. Exercise uh, leads to inflammation. Inflammation over time can lead to fibrosis. The fibrosis uh, in turn sets up the substrate for the uh, disordered electrical activity of atrial fibrillation. Patches of fibrosis do not conduct electrical signals. So when the normal electrical signals in the heart are propagating through the atrial myocardium, if that signal hits a patch of fibrosis, it's not going to propagate. And this sets up the uh, potential for having multiple different circuits occur um, at the same time, which is what leads to um, atrial fibrillation. We also know that Patients who participate in very high endurance sports have an imbalance in their autonomic nervous system tone that favors a very high vagal tone. The very high vagal parasympathetic state favors shortening of the atrial action potential duration, which in turn favors setting up multiple circuits in the heart as well. In general, high vagal tone is associated with health. And we know from studies that of heart rate variability, of heart rate recovery after exercise, that um, athletes have a much more robust vagal system than uh, non-athletes. 
There is a flip side to vagal activity though, which that is that vagal activity can predispose to atrial fibrillation. It's actually the combination of both vagal activation and sympathetic activation together that are the most arrhythmogenic in inducing atrial fibrillation in experimental models. And the athlete is like the living example of that experimental model. So I don't think we're going to find that it's one or the other, but really rather the interplay of all of these factors that sets up the endurance athlete for atrial fibrillation. This is something that does not occur overnight. This is something that generally takes many years and decades of high endurance training. You would need very high pressures and very high heart rates sustained for long durations of time. And it is thought that the frequency of the training sessions that don't allow the heart to kind of recover in between sessions maintains a very high inflammatory state in the heart that basically sets up these conditions. What we do not know is where things cross the line and where the adaptive response of the heart to exercise becomes maladaptive, thereby leading to arrhythmias. Join us next time for an up-close look at how doctors managed the case of an endurance athlete sidelined by atrial fibrillation in the prime of his life. Hi, my name is Kelvin and I work on the team that creates the content that you've just seen, Metscape TV. If you like the content and want to see more, click on the button to the right and it'll take you to the full series.